Let's take a look at an application problem dealing with reciprocals of numbers. <clears throat> so here's the exercise. It says one positive number is five less than another positive number. It says if four times the reciprocal of the smaller number is added to two times the reciprocal of the larger number, then the sum of those two quantities is one. And we're, we, we need to try to find what those two numbers are. So we have a small number, we'll call it A. We have a big number, we'll call it B. And the first step, the first thing we want to do is try to um, put some variables in here <clears throat> to where we're, we're relating the two numbers to, another, to uh, each other. So I think I see the relationship. It says one number is five less than the other number. So the smaller one is five less than the bigger one. So if the bigger one, we'll, we'll call it, is uh, labeled, let's say, x, then the smaller one will be called x minus 5 because it's 5 less than the bigger one. So the x and the x minus 5 are going to be the numbers we're actually using in our equation. All right, so the next thing we, we want to do is take those quantities and try to write some equation based off of those values. So let, that's what the next sentence says. It says, starting here, if 4 times the reciprocal, so let, let me try that, 4 times the reciprocal, remember the reciprocal means you flip, flip the term, and so x minus 5 would be in the denominator, 4 times the reciprocal of the smaller number, so that would be 1 over x minus 5 as opposed to just x minus 5, is added to two times the reciprocal of the uh, larger number, so the reciprocal of the larger number is one over x, two times that, the sum of those two is equal to one. So we've done a good job. We've taken the word problem and we've written it as a math equation. So this would be like uh, four over x minus five, if you just put the four up here in the numerator, which you're allowed to do, plus 2 over x equals 1. So we're not done, but this is a good start. This is an equation that represents this word problem here. So if we can solve for x, then, then we'll, we'll be good. We'll have our, our two solutions. Okay, so next let's, um, let's go to a, a new page just so we can write some of this stuff down. All right, we've got what was it, 4 over x minus 5, and then plus 2 over x equals 1. So now we're going to you know, bring back up in our, in our mind how we solve rational uh, equations like this. And first thing we do is we have to get rid of the fractions by multiplying both sides by the LCD. The LCD of these two rational expressions here would be x times x minus 5. We're going to multiply that LCD on the left side and the right side. Now I'm kind of um, uh, uh, crunched for space here, so I'm going to be a little, little lazy with my notation here. Um, I'm just going to write LCD on the left and LCD multiplied on the right. You should probably write out the whole what the LCD actually is. I'm just a little crunched for space here. So we're going to distribute this guy on the left and multiply it on the right as well. All right, on the left-hand side, the first term, the x minus 5s cancel, so you just get 4x. The second term, the x's cancel, and you would have a 2 times the x minus 5, this also being distributed, equals x times x minus 5, that's the LCD, times 1. So we'll, we'll just write those two guys here. So great, now we have an equation that doesn't have fractions. Let's do the simple math, like distributing out, so I can see all the individual terms, see what I have to work with. We've got 4x plus 2x minus 10 equals x squared minus 5x. All right, this is a quadratic equation. I can tell because it's got the x squared term there. Let's move everything to the same side, and then so that it'll be equal to zero then we'll factor and do all those normal things. R rather than move everything to the left, I think I'm going to move everything to the right this time since the x squared is already positive. We'll have x squared. Let's see, uh, 4x and 2x make 6x. 
negative 5x minus 6x would make minus 11x, and then plus 10 equals 0. All right, I think we can factor that term right here. We'll have an x and an x, and then we'll have, let's see, probably a 10 and a 1. And I'm thinking x minus 10, x minus 1. Yeah, that'll give us minus 11x, and then the product is still po positive 10. So we get x equals 10, or x equals 1. Okay. Now, are, are those my two numbers? They're not five five units apart. What what's what's going on here? What what is x? So x is ten and x is one. But let, let's go back to the original, um, the original statement and and figure out what's what's going on here. So we had a small number and a big number. The big number was x and the small number was x minus five. So um, we either have for our answer. Let's, let's say a small number and a big number. So either the big number is 10, right? Because x was 10, and the small number is 5, because you've got um, 10 minus 5 is 5. That looks pretty good. I, I like that one. But then what, what about the other number? Um, when x was 1, remember that was a solution as well, then the smaller number would be 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. Now that's interesting. So here, the actual math equation holds true four times the reciprocal of the smaller number and all that. I bet it probably does add to one, but there's a, a problem. In the uh, statement, it says one positive number is five less than another positive number. So the problem with this one is that the answers don't fall into what we normally call a feasible domain. Um, your teacher might use a slightly different wording, but feasible domain is just a domain that makes sense. Answers that, that don't make any sense, negative time or here a negative four for the smaller number, if that doesn't make sense or it's not allowed, then uh, you have to toss it out. So it looks like for our final answer, the small number is five and the bigger number is 10. Um, don't leave your answer as x equals 10. Write it out in, in be better language. Um, matter of fact, I probably shouldn't even say s and b. So we'll say small, small number should be 5, and the big number should be 10. If you want to go back and verify with these two specific numbers that everything works out correctly, you're welcome to do that. But um, anyways, hopefully this helps you better understand how to solve these application problems dealing with reciprocals of numbers.